Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to our live coverage here at Chaos TV of the US Challenger Series number 12. This is game number one of the day. We will have another best of three coming up later with Pulse and Spuddington. But for now, this is game number two between Reason Gaming and Asian Maids. Currently resides a 1-0 for Asian Maids after a very comfortable first game win. I believe the end scoreline was 16-1 and with LeBlanc just going astronomically huge. It was quite scary. I met this joined by Enzi and we're on to the picks and bans stage here, Enz. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a mystical evening with Chaos TV. One team will be victorious. Why am I doing this? Wow. That, that's, okay. That's a first. All right, all right. <laughs> Were yeah. you trying to be the movie guy? No, I, the guy I, that... no. Okay, I can do this. One team will come out on top. Find out on twitch.tv slash chaos TV which team that will be. <laughs> wow. Um, well, you threw me off there, Enzi. I'll, I'll give you props for that. But we have the same picks and bands coming out as game number one Sona, Zillion, Jarvan the Fourth, Fizz, Zed, and Zack. So no changes there, not fearing the LeBlanc for an example, and not fearing the Aatrox as well. We said this in game number one that a lot of the plaudits, a lot of the praise will go to LeBlanc just purely on the damage and how well uh, transitioned that one in for Prey Love. But really, Ko was taking a lot of the initiative there with the ganks and he really did snowball mid lane. LeBlanc only needs a kill or two to just go huge. This time around they're actually switching it up. So last game it was actually Agent taking Lee Sin, this time it's going to be Ko. So I'm wondering if they're going to go for an Aatrox. It's very, very possible. I just wanted to uh, update you, Robin, who is streaming this, um, that the stream is lagging for me, and it seems like... Okay. Um, Lisa? Indeed, Lee Sin, as you said there. Um, for Ko, so he played high progressive, he was very mobile around the jungle, so Lee Sin definitely makes a lot of sense for him, because that's really Lee Sin in a nutshell. He's got the resonating strike and the safeguard as well, and apparently our stream is dropping frames. So can they actually hear us and see us at the moment? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you're going to restart the stream. Okay, well, we're going to restart the stream, ladies and gents, so fingers crossed we'll be back very shortly. Sorry about this. Oh, we'll just carry on then, yeah? Okay, we're just going to carry on because apparently we're recording for YouTube, so wave to you guys on YouTube. You'll be the only one seeing this one. Uh, they have gone through with a few more picks here. Very similar champions throughout. The only difference this time around is Xin Zhao. So you're going to have Shen and Caitlyn alongside Elise once again, NZ. So it's fairly interesting that both teams would just basically keep the same champions in the, the rotation. Yeah, if they go for the Ari again, like... See, maybe they would have done much better. Maybe they just realized, okay, you know, that level one, our early start, it wasn't good. If we can change that, then they might think, okay, we have a chance there, okay? So they might just go with them same champions and they might just see how it goes. They might change that, that early game, which really messed them up, you know, with Aatrox being able to pick up kills uh, in a lot of places. So gonna have to see how this one pans out. Yes, and we just got informed that we are live once again, so apologies for that delay, ladies and gents. As you can see, we have some more picks coming up for your viewing pleasure. Uh, Zin is the only change up thus far uh, out of the champions that have been played. As you can see, we've got Nami, Vayne, Elise locked in here for Reason Gaming. They're hovering over the Heimerdinger. Last time it was a placeholder pick for Shen, so I don't know if they're gonna be going for that one again, seeing as Shen's already been locked in. But looks like they're going to have the Ari as well. And you know, Asian Maids, we were talking about this in the champion select for game number one. And we were saying we don't know a great deal of them. I've heard a lot of their players individually, but we didn't really know what to expect going into game number one. Well, NZ, our questions were answered. They were phenomenally strong. And I think from Reason Gaming's perspective here, that kind of knocked them back a tiny bit. And they're like, oh crap, we, we really do have to respect the team we're against here because they could just ruffle stomp us again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're probably thinking right now, we need to step up our game. You know, that, that last game, what happened, not going to happen again, and, you know, they're going to try and, I guess, put it behind them and just look forward. Obviously, you know, the mistakes, if they're able to just say, okay, we did this wrong, we did that wrong, it's easier said than done, trust me. 
and then just be like, okay, let's move forward, let's win this game, let's absolutely dominate. Maybe they'll be able to do it, you know, they'll pick that Harry back up. They're probably going to change the early game. Well, it's interesting because Prey Love was playing LeBlanc last game, and as we know, just went huge, and was facing off against Harry. So this oh, time, the, the size of change. Oh. Yeah, so this time it's going to be Prey Love occupying the Ari, almost like pointing at Bimbo and saying, "This is how you play an Ari. This is how you play this champion." And similar to Ko, Ko was Aatrox last game, whereas Agent was Lee Sin, and this time Ko is taking Lee Sin for himself. So kind of mind games between the two teams. But there's the Carthus lock and Enzi. You are a massive fan of Carthus, so this is going to be an interesting one. You got Carthus and Vayne on the same team. That spells late game serious damage to me. Absolutely, but yeah, if we look at the last game, Asian maids, how did they win it early game? Yeah. Are they going to allow a reason to get to the late game? That's the question. You know, Carthus, as you said, I love playing Carthus. I mean, you press R and you do damage. It's great. <laughs> you don't have to do much. And of course, like, you know, you land that wall, you Q, 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 but largely enough, he's, he's used for that ultimate, right? And then you've got the Vayne for the late game, of course. Now, they're going up against the Caitlyn in lane, so we're going to have to see how that one pans out. They've got a fresh as well. So if he lands that hook, it can be bad, bad times. And of course, Ari can just burst Carthus down in lane level 6. Yeah, but it's again, it's the same kind of composition that Reason Gaming are coming up against. That they're finding themselves with a Vayne, very scary champion in this current meta, but against Caitlyn, who is regarded as a counterpick, and a hard counterpick at that. So, with the Thrash as well, they're going to have a lot of presence in lane that I would expect, but going into the mid to late game, that's when Vayne and Nami is going to become very scary, because Tidecaller's Blessing on Vayne is going to allow her with final hour to just chop through anybody she so pleases, but as you said, you hit the nail on the head. Last time, Asian Maze did not allow Reason Gaming to get past the 20 minute mark. So we can talk, talk all about Vayne and the late game presence that she has all we want but at the end of the day if asian get uh, asian maids have the same kind of presence as they did last game it's not going to get to that period but we are going to find out how it goes ladies and gents in about two minutes when we rejoin this game we're going to cut to a very quick commercial break while the delay is on when you rejoin us it's going to be live in game number two between reason gaming and asian maids we'll see you very shortly
Hello and welcome back. We are live once again for the US Challenger Series number 12. I'm going to cut myself short here because Kazmic, I thought for a split second, was going to get himself caught with his pants down, but not to be the case. Either way, it is game number two between Reason Gaming and Asian Maids. If you've just joined us, game number one went very handily to Asian Maids. Agent is now finding himself being chased down, and uh, he should be just fine. Q comes out from Lee Sin, not going to land, and Thresh was not in range for that death sentence. Uh, anyway, I met us joined by Enzi, and unfortunately the players had a Herp Derp moment again, and for t forgot to allow spectator mode on, so uh, Enzi is going to be casting from the stream. Apologies for this, but it's not in our hands. So if I sound completely dumb, bad, like GG Noobcaster, get off stream, <laughs> that's why, guys. I, I give you permission to flame me. Do it. Yeah. Flame him. But just know that he has delay on his stream. So he could be a few seconds behind the actual live content. Either way, uh, we're not going to have a first blood this time around, Enzi. You remember last time it was, I believe, Shen picking up the first blood after Aatrox beautifully jumped in with a dark flight and knocked three players into the air from Reason Gaming. So going to be a more standard approach here. Xin Zhao's agent is going to be starting on blue, whereas on the flip side, you're going to have Ko on Lee Sin picking up his red. Yeah, you know, that level 1 Aatrox just diving in there, and the Shen Taunt, it was just a guaranteed kill, Harry gave away that first blood. And on top of that, Vince, we were actually, we were speaking, uh, as loading into the game, um, about the barrier and Ignite, um, as Harry, who was actually on the opposite side, uh, what took barrier against LeBlanc, the differential playstyle is now going to take the exhaust, of course, because it's Carthus. But it looks like we actually have a lane swap here. We do, and it was a bit of a belated lane switch as well, because Karthus took Wraiths and then recalls. Now, you can kind of understand why, because he's going to be going into that lane with half of his hit points, plus he's going to be able to pick up some extra pots on the way. So, it does make sense to get more sustain in a 1 versus 2 lane. Karthus does pretty well in this situation, because he can spam off his lay waste, which is his Q, little mushroom that appears on the ground, and uh, pick himself up some farm. Again, going back to what we talked about in Champion Select, it makes sense for a Vayne to switch up lanes against Caitlyn because Caitlyn just harasses her and really counters Vayne hard in lane. So this is going to allow Vayne to get free farm in mid while not being punished from the Caitlyn Thresh bot lane. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Reason just want to shut that Ari down. Uh, as you said, Karthus isn't too bad in a 1v2 lane because he can, you know, he can keep his distance, he can just spam them Qs away and he'll be fine. Uh, obviously, he is against the Caitlyn though, so Caitlyn's going to have range on him anyway. But, you know, Karthus is definitely more suited to that 1v2 than an Ari. I gotta say, though, with him taking Wraiths first before going down to bot lane, this is really precarious, but a nice charm landing from Ari, knocking back Nardius. Exhaust, sorry, the Ignite was popped as well. Nice Exhaust coming out from Kazmich. May very well have negated enough damage to save Nardius's life. What I was about to say, though, before all hell broke loose in mid, is look at that bot tower, Enzi. It's already down sub-400 hit points. This is going to be falling very soon. So picking up Wraiths could actually be a huge detriment right now for Reason Gaming, who are going to find themselves behind very, very quickly in this matchup. Whereas you look on the flip side, Vayne and uh, Nami have put absolutely zero damage down on the opposition tower. 
Yeah, they've, they've done the lane swap, but they just haven't pressured that tower like Asian maids are doing. Because they're going to get that tower, then they're going to be able to just switch the lanes up, and it's just going to be Ari versus Carthus like it is technically meant to be. Yeah, and there we go. The The lane has just gone down. First objective at 4 minutes 30 on the clock, and as you called, Mystical Enzy strikes again. Pray Love and Ari's going down to bot lane. So this lane switch up has really backfired. Yes, Vayne and Nami managed to get some free farm, but there is zero damage put down on the mid tower of Asian Maid. So this is a, a bit of a head scratcher and it's going to be damage kind of territory right now for Reason Gaming who remember just came off the back of a, a bit of a pasting, it's fair to say, NZ in game number one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You could say they kind of got something. Um, yeah, that's not the greatest way to put it. That's a bit mean, but it's true. You know, the truth hurts sometimes. And that's the truth. What's going to happen in this game, I don't know. But yeah, they're going to switch the lanes up. And it is going to be that Vayne and Nami up against the Flesh and the Caitlyn. So it's just going to be... Like, you could see what they were trying to do with the lane swaps, right? It was completely suited, but they just didn't do what they needed to do. And then Caitlyn and the Fresh just played it well, you know? They just pushed that tower down as quickly as possible. They took advantage of Carthus not being in lane. And now they're going to pay for it. Ari's going to be able to lane against that Carthus. Yeah, Ari is behind it in CS. But the tower's down. They've got that global gold. Now it's just lanes as they're meant to be. Yeah, very true. But Ari needs to be careful because if she starts to push too hard towards this second tier tower, Prelove will be finding uh, himself on the receiving end of Agent Spear. So needs to be very careful. But Ko is just lurking around in the shadows. So it's a bit of an interesting kind of mind game field right now. But Caitlyn is uh, starting to pull the advantage in terms of CS. And you can already see that Nardius and Kazmich are like, we want no part of this. The death sentence has landed on Kazmich as well. There's the flay backwards. Are they going to follow up on this one? Lots of damage. Ignite goes down as well. Kazmich will be falling to the Pilt of a Peacemaker. And that is first blood. And I can't help but feel that Kazmich just kind of went walkabout there in his mind. Just was stood out way in the open, inviting the death sentence. And winner obliged. Absolutely. Kaelin with that kill now. They're going to be able to even put some damage down on their mid tower if they do decide to as well. The support is not up, but it looks like Zin Zhao is going to just come in and uh, provide that support there in that mid lane. As it looks like they're going in. Sorry. They are going in, and Ko's very nearly fallen down there. Nice condemn from Vayne. Here comes the huge charm and damage Ignite's taking down. That is going to claim the second kill. So Prey Love is already stamping his authority in game number two. And Enzi, this looks like the second t tower is going to be falling as well from Agent Maid. So they're starting off in the same kind of form as game number one. Death Sentence lands. And here comes the charm as well. Kazmich is catching every skill shot in the game, it appears to be thus far. Stand United used from Shen. And they are going to pick up that second tower. So, uh, Reason Gaming are... I, I could imagine that their rear end is hurting right now. Wow. Wow. Indeed. Dude. Okay. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Two towers down already. The mid tower, the bot tower. Just like we said. Oh, yeah. They have a vein. They have a carpet. Late game. Look what's happening in the early game. They're just getting completely outplayed. Two towers down. It's not going to get to the late game if it carries on like this. There's no use of picking them late game champions if you can't take advantage and just at least hold off the early game to, to be able to get them to that late game stage. Otherwise, there's no use in picking them late game champions. And this is the head scratcher for me. They they initiated this lane switch up, Enzi, and it just backfired horrifically. Now, I maybe there was a lapse in concentration, or there was a lapse in communication here from Reason Gaming, because Carthus going for wraiths first does make sense in the case that he wants half of his level up. Death Sentence comes through, he's not going to cancel that recall from Agent, so no scumbag winner for today. But it is going to give him half XP as it did, and it also gave him more uh, pots going into bot lane to be more sustainable, but in doing so he'd lost half his uh, hit points on his tower by the time he even got there. So maybe it was a late decision. Judging from the positioning of Nami as well, who was down towards the blue buff, maybe it was just a kind of late decision there, Enzi, to switch the lanes up. As I'm talking, Dragon has gone down completely uncontested. At 9 minutes, that's a 4k goal difference. It's difficult to see how Reason Gaming can come back from this one. Coach has been caught, but Dragon rages uh, Kazmich back towards his own tower as the flash was burned. Yeah, it could have just been a mishap of communication. I mean, not mishap, but they, they could have just 
decided it way too late, so Carthage just got them race, and then, you know, was late to the lane, but what's done is done, and they cannot do anything about it right now. The dragon does come out, something we didn't see uh, from the first game, even though uh, Asian maids did have the, the very big advantage. You know, they had that advantage, they, they had the dominance down, actually, at the bot lane as well, where they were pushed. They could have went for it, but they didn't. They chose not to, but this time around, they're going to take it. Yeah, very true, and with all this pressure being applied in mid, uh, it's going to leave Caitlyn at bot lane just free farming. That's exactly what she's doing right now. So Jez is, just, is just having a dream game thus far. Farming, 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 77 to 68. So Nardius can't even get any farm on right now. He's going to be hoping these minions are pushing. There we go, they're going to be pushing the, the lane. Uh, and in doing so, Kazmich will join his AD carry alongside Winner opting to join Jez's as Caitlyn. However, top lane, some action going to be going down. Ko's found himself an agent. Nice charm as well. Mozilla's going to be jumping up with the repel just in time to see the doom of Xin Zhao. There's the double kill at top. Will Ko go down? Yes, he will. Here comes the Requiem. Don't think that's going to be enough for Ari. No, it's not. Who escapes by the skin of his teeth. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Asian maids are completely dominating this early game once again, just like we saw the last game as well. And the difference is, is that, uh, like like we said in the champion select, you know, the, the champions kind of got switched around. I mean, you've got the Aoi now uh, on the opposite side, where it was actually played on Reason before. You know, and they, they have that late game vein now. You know, like they didn't have that before, and they're not putting that to good use either, you know, like, yeah, you have to kind of wait for the late game, but they're not doing anything to, yeah, they try to help it get to the late game by, uh, you know, doing that, that uh, the lane switch up, but just, it just didn't work. Yeah, bot lane just saw some action there. Beautiful dark passage comes good, but it may not actually be staving off this onslaught. Jezis has Stan United on top of him. They're going to be turning this one back round again. Shen lands the torn on Agent. Now, there's going to be Agent falling courtesy of Winner. And here comes Prey Love from the side. Ace in the hole lands on Nardius. He should be okay. Barry's come out by say should be okay, but another beautiful torn lands from Shen. That's going to be the second and third kill you have to feel here. And the Dragon's Rage knocking Bimbo back into the fray. Remember that Requiem was used beforehand to uh, try and secure those kills at top lane. So that is a four for zero trade. An Asian maze just shifting through the gear and cruising down the highway. This could very well be their third tower, uncontested, unreplied to. Just wow. I mean, Asian maze, brilliant team fight. I love that Leeson play with the kickback to get Karthus in, in, into the, the depths of uh, the enemy team as well. And just nine kills to one, 12 minutes in, Three towers to zero. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a surrender at 20 minutes. No, exactly. I wouldn't either. And if we were to add these two games combined, right now the scoreline in kills and deaths adds up to 27 kills for Asian maids, two for Reason Gaming. That shows how one-sided this best of three has been thus far. And unless something miraculous happens, Enzi, I love to be the optimist, I love to hype games up, but as it stands right now, I, I simply can't see how Reason Gaming can claw their way back into this game. It would have to take something superb, or a Herculean throw from Asian Mates. I have no idea. I, I don't reckon they can. You know, like, I'm just going to say, GG well played. <laughs> My yep. prediction. Uh, that pretty much sums it up right now. Prey Love uh, finds himself up against four players. The uh, wall comes down from Carthus, but... Dark Passage from Thrash will come good once again. Ko from the side, and uh, Vayne is making his way down slowly but surely. Prey Love's taking a bit of damage there from Mozilla. Dragon's Rage back into Shen. That's a beautiful combination. Dragon's Raging into the Shen Torn, catching up on every single player in the mid. Here comes Vayne from the back side. Stands on top of a trap. Talk about wrong place at the wrong time. Now he's going to fall there, focusing so hard onto Shen. The Cocoon has landed, but at what cost is this going to take on them? Because now Agent is being chased down. That's going to be Karthus falling. Here comes the Requiem. How many kills is it going to secure? Doubt it's going to actually do anything there. Karthus simply not doing a lot of damage. Vayne in the backside will be taking out Prey Love. Jez is against Nardius, but there's two more players. This is an unfair team fight right now from Nardius' perspective. And the Q will finish off things nicely. So at the end of the day, that was a three. In fact, a four for two uh, trade as Nami just respawned. Did you just see how long Shen was just in the middle yep. of all of them players? It's just like, hi, I'm here. Wow. Agent, um, 
interesting idea, bro. It, it just didn't pay off for you. I'm not sure if you... You're a bit behind NZ, so maybe you're seeing that now, okay. but... Agent just, just kind of uh, banzaied his way <laughs> up against uh, Asian maids, and just didn't really pay out for him. Wanted to give Caitlyn a kiss. Yes. Uh, it turned out to be uh, kind of at his own downfall there, but Ko's now gone down to bot lane. So, again, they're, they're trying their best here, Reason Gaming, but... I just, I can't see where it's going to come from. They would have to turtle for the next 15, 20 minutes at least if they were to stand any hope. Because look at Karthus' items. Doesn't even have the Rod of Ages right now, so Requiem is not going to be as terrifying as people are used to. Vayne, fair enough, has the Bilgewater Cutlass, but still hasn't finished off the Blade of the Ruined King. Compare that to Caitlyn's item builds, NZ. That's a Bloodthirster pickaxe and the components for a zeal. There's massive difference in damage. Absolutely. Um, I, I honestly do not know how. Like you said, you know they're gonna, they would have to turtle for so long. The Asian maids aren't gonna give them breathing space. They're gonna continually put that pressure on them, and they're not gonna let them turtle. They're just gonna push them down and kill them. Yeah, so Agent's going to be picking up his red buff right now. Second consecutive Drake is going to be falling in a heartbeat to Asian Maid. So, as you can see on the gold counter, 27.2 to 18.7k in Asian Maid's favor. 3 to 1 towers and 15 to 3 in terms of kills. Mozilla seems more content just to farm up right now. they are pinging off the mid tower. Uh, but Vayne's just basically farming bots. So, without two of their core players in terms of damage. They, they can't hope to defend against this push right now unless they start to get in the meantime, but Vayne is falling right now. Q's landed from Ko. They're going to secure this kill. Apologies for missing the start of that, but it's uh, it's not the most entertaining game to watch, Angie, this one. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty stompy, you know? Pretty stompy up in the joint. But, uh, Lee Sin just wanted to, you know, um, say hi to the enemy team and just jump back out again. Maybe he got bored. I don't know. I don't know if you saw that, Vince. I did, yeah. Trying to showcase some uh, some Lee mechanics there. Here comes the poke from Prey Love. They are taking down this tower very quickly and no one seems bothered about Jez's. That's because Shen is round from the side. MYW is just putting a lot of presence down. He's not necessarily doing a great deal, but his mere presence alone is enough to put off Mozilla and Kazmich from engaging on anybody right now. They need to be careful, because it's these kind of plays that could actually come down and be their detriment. If they start to get cocky here, NZ, it could be the start of their downfall. But that's a beautiful death sentence. Agent, who, you know, Zin's normally classed as one of the tankiest champions on your team, just goes down instantly. There was no retaliation at all. Instantly dropped. Wow, he got absolutely bursted, and you know, you have that Ari for that burst, you have the Caitlyn on, sitting on 6 kills, you have Lee Sin, you can just jump straight in there. If they catch someone with fresh right now, they're dead. It, it's done. You've got the charm to follow up, you've got the taunt to follow up. You've got everything to follow up on that hook. Well, Requiem's coming out, but it's pretty much just tickling everybody. You know, did it, did a fly just land on me? I, I don't know, but it definitely wasn't damage that I just experienced, and they're not going to be picking up this first inhibitor. You know, we're talking about surrender votes, Enzi. This game can actually be over before they get the opportunity to surrender the way it's been going so far. So with that inhib going down, Super Minion's coming in very shortly. The Aqua Prism has landed, but again, they're not even going to bother to follow that one up because they know they have no chance. Caitlyn at the back with the red buff is going to be tearing through everybody. Currently level 11, very much higher than anybody. Nardis has been caught from a charm, instantly popped down. What a huge surprise that is. Mozilla now is going to try and make some plays with a repel. Here comes a tidal wave from the side, but Shen refuses to lose. He will not go down and somehow survives. I have no idea how he pulled that one off. I can only assume his level 2 feint was just enough shield to keep him alive. But that again is a 3 for 0 trade. The GG well played to coming out. And uh, that is going to be game number 2 very shortly. That shield. Shen gonna survive. And that was just the ruffle stomp game. That was just... Both games were just so one-sided. So dominating from Asian maids. Wow. Really impressive stuff.
you kind of run out of superlatives for these guys because they, they've just played so well and they've burst on into our EUS Challenger series and honestly I could see them going the distance off these performances. Spuddington was talking to us in the break and he said, you know, maybe as a team they, they won't have that cohesion but as individual players, four of these guys are in Challenger for solo queue. So these guys know what they're doing. They're, they're phenomenally gifted individual players, but it comes down to synergy. And thus far, Enzi, their synergy seems to have been on point. They have completely rushed through Reason Gaming here. A team that we've seen a couple times in the EOS Challenger Series before. A team that's done pretty decent overall. And they've made them look fairly ordinary. Ko trying to get some style points, gets himself killed, but that, that uh, Nexus is going to be going down very shortly. Yeah, he kind of miscalculated uh, when to dive in there. Yeah, he thought he could uh, get back to the ward, but he's gonna pay for that one. Poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> well, they're not finishing this game. Uh, it seems like a bit of a demolition derby right now instead. Uh, everyone seemingly wants to chime in with the kills, but uh, the Super Minions are gonna by and large finish this one off around the 20 minute mark. There goes the surrender. Jazz's get shut down but it is just the final nail in the coffin. That's going to be a two for zero. Um, very comfortably in the end of Asian Maids. I'm going to call it right now, Enzi. I can see these guys going the distance in this tournament. Would not be surprised if we see them in the final in a few days' time. Completely agree. They completely dominated Reason Gaming, who aren't a bad side whatsoever. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they hold up for the rest of this. They just played superbly. They really did. Very much the case, guys. So with that 2-0 and zero victory, I apologize if you can hear that in the background. Someone seems to have the loudest car ever. But either way, that is going to conclude this best of three. 2-0 in the end, and I believe a best of three number two is scheduled in about, I believe it's uh, in an hour and 30 minutes. So there could be a pretty big wait in between these games. Hopefully we can get in contact with the teams prior and see if we can get it rescheduled a bit earlier. But for me and Enzi, that is going to be all for us tonight. Next game, I believe, is Croissant Crusaders. And I can't remember who they're against. Ruben, do you know? He's going to have a quick check. But I can tell you which cast it's going to be. It's going to be Spuddington and Pulse. KMT, formerly known as a Nexus. So that should be a really good team. Uh, Croissant Crusaders has players like Broken Shard and Spontex in their lineup. So they're going to be a phenomenally strong team. Definitely one to watch. As I said, it's scheduled to be in about an hour and a half. Hopefully you can get it sooner. We will give you updates if that is the case. But from us, that's going to be all. Say bye, Enzi. Where can they find you, actually, if they want to watch you uh, cast again? Uh, I don't reckon people really want to, but uh, <laughs> go to facebook.com slash N-Z-E-N-Z-Z-E-E. -E -E. uh, I will be getting a new mic, so don't be, uh, don't be alarmed. I know this is bad. It sounds like I'm in a bathtub. Being in a bathtub's good. And one final shout out, please. Yeah, bathtubs are good if you want a bath. You know, that, that's, that's a given. If you want to follow me, it's facebook.com forward slash metastv. That's going to do it for us, guys, and uh, we will probably be seeing you tomorrow for more casts, but from uh, Spuddington and Pulse, they are coming up later tonight. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>